We'll talk about the AMC strong signs and how short you should want your shares to go in this video. I really think that everyone should know about the ratio of general growth to releases. If you look at the numbers from 2018, 2017, and 2019, you'll see that the amount of movies that open each quarter in 2019 is the same as it was before the pandemic, when only half of the movies were released. Yes, you know that those were all successful years. Even though the Hollywood strike had an effect, lockdowns and strikes are over, and there are now many new ways to make money, such as Blockbuster to come, route debt to 2029 growth, cash on hand, and earnings to come. Even so, there are a lot fewer movies out now than there were in 2024 and 2023. It's a new era, which means that more movies will likely do well at the box office. Things can only get better from here. AMC is having a comeback at the box office right now. As the biggest company, we stand to gain the most from this, which is why it's important. As long as we're talking about basics, let's follow the current BPS trend all the way through 2025. The book price per share BPS measure was brought to my attention by Lau. If AMC turns positive by March 31st, 2025, in the first quarter of that year, that is a very good sign that company finances will get better. Short sellers are done and you can see he goes further into, of course, the analysis, so feel free to check this out. Make sure you give everyone the support, every ape who obviously gives out the due diligence and research, but it's understanding in terms of pretty much how AMC is going to improve. Fundamentally, and now this is obviously going to be even better. When we see that we obviously have more movies being released, when we see we're going to get more revenue, get more higher total growth, that's what's ultimately important for AMC. And so institutions, short sellers, they all see this, they realize that AMC and C and the whole box office is in a state where they are able to release more and more films which are going to produce more and more money than they did pre-pandemic level. And this is why you're seeing institutions piling into the theater industry and more importantly, piling into the AMC shares. And this is also why you're seeing the short sellers who know that AMC is going to go up. They're obviously afraid. And that's why they're trying to, of course, bring the price down. And that's ultimately what's important for AMC. And I think this meme right now kind of um, dictates you what it is for the short C securities anytime they get able to sell one share, obviously cheering. And like we talked about, there is an abundance of synthetics of AMC shares. But what there is a lack of is, of course, the real shares of AMCs, which are held by the apes, which are held by the retail investors. That's why every time they're able to get one share, they're extremely excited. But it's also why they always try so hard to make people sell their AMC shares. Furthermore, you can see this AMC and Jimmy appear to be completely remerging on the Elgo, that's great news if we see a strong reversal a few hours back. Uh, the 30-minute candles were obviously seeing the flip on C. Now, as I already said, AMC is always a good place to see evasion and manipulation. One interesting thing I noticed was that AMC was up 1.69% while NVIDIA was down because of the profit from the sell-off. This shows that AMC can go up when these companies' collaterals go down because they don't have to worry as much about having to pay back the collaterals and the formula changes again. It's always a good thing especially when combined with AMC's plans for the future. He also talked about getting to know AMC's owners well and talking about synthetics. This man from Sweden told me that traders in Sweden look at information about the number of AMC owners to see if each share owner has an average of the same number of shares as I do. Sweden will have half of the flow all by itself. Sweden is a small country with only 10 million people, so it makes sense that the number of shareholders can still hit half of the float. This should really help you understand how many times the float has been bought over. Few thousand shares is a pretty small amount for me, but it's enough to put you on par with two of the biggest brokerages in Sweden. Note that there are 9,900 owners of AMC and, for that matter, 16,520 owners of DMC. And as we already talked about, the fact that almost every AMC, synthetic, or IOU share you buy today is probably not useless. By buying IOU shares, you are actually making short sellers take on more protection and putting more pressure on them. As you might expect, when there is a squeeze, more shares are bought back. This means that more short shares are covered, which naturally drives prices up even more. The UN has no idea how many times the float has been bought by individual buyers. This is what happens when you buy synthetic shares. We have already talked about this understanding how APRs are actually settled, delivered, and converted. This is because APE shares are still being traded in Europe and the cost to borrow APRs is still changing, even when you take into account the fact that institutions are now buying into AMC. You could look at this in a different way. It's crazy to think that the prime hookers were able to give and convert APE when 90% of his equity was stolen from the 12 hold in one day on the PU. If you showed them 10 years worth of AMC on the ex-dividend day of eight, they would then see 10 years worth of APE, 
So that should tell us that the shares were not really turned back into AMC. Why don't the shares get turned back into cash? Well, this has a number of problems that we have already talked about and fixed. Ultimately, it was clear that they weren't able to do this. However, they also know that they are hanging on to a lot of shares because they were shorting both AMC and A peers. I already said that this is a great example of how the market is being manipulated and slowed down. That being said, we know about it and have brought it to light, and we will work hard to change it. As Robert M. said, I really believe they got margin call Tuesday because why would you post it the day after with no due process to notify anyone? This is also what we talked about when we talked about the margin call warning. The news mostly talks about the SEC's announcement that they will be giving advice on programs for managing the liquidity risk of open-end funds and making it easier for registered investment companies to share information. Over the past few weeks and months, it's become clear that there have been a lot of warnings about how important it is to increase liquidity in case of a margin core, how important it is to lower your risk that is, how banks are running out of capital and liquidity, and other stories along those lines. Because of this, it is very clear to us and everyone else that the market is having major issues right now. It is very easy for people to have their margin called or for the market to crash significantly. Now that Robert M has made it clear, they did get a margin call. I'd also like to add that I think that is more of a warning. Because of this, we're hearing news like that. The big ones are almost certain to stay Florida or be margin C. I think that the fact that we are getting this margin core warning, on the other hand, is a very good sign of what's to come and a clear sign that these shorts are in trouble. A lot of people are close to me, or maybe some of them have been before. Of course, the lack of supply puts things in a very bad spot again. We talked about synthetics, Nike shorts, and AP shares. It all comes down to the fact that AMC and GAME don't have enough volume. If there is no supply, there is no supply to short. This means that supply equals up down tick to fill inventory full floor to profile equals force up T to find next supply inefficiency while trying to cover growing demand. Those of you who don't get that very easy fact should know that there is no supply to short when there is no volume. That part one I'm sure everyone knows. When there is no supply, the shorts have to make the synthetics, which is exactly what we were talking about when we talked about how many times the float has been bought. But it also brings up something we've already talked about, the fact that they are making more synthetics means they are putting up more security, which means that when the squeeze happens, they will pay even more for the shares. They really are doing this, and we should be aware of it, its influence all over again. We talked about how the CEO or XO of Pelon was complaining about how bad the market was yesterday. Today, Mark Cuban will be complaining about how bad the EC is. I would never trust them to do the right thing. As I said before, and as many others have pointed out, rules are a mess right now. This is one of the main reasons why AMC isn't being treated fairly or is still being stifled. But the fact that there aren't many rules is what makes the market so risky, which is why it will pay off in the end. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.